Hi guys, Vertis here and welcome to 3D Mutiny. So this video is going to be all about how to sculpt metal inside of the workflow. So today we're going to take this concept and sculpt it onto this character. So this is slightly stylized, but the same sort of workflow I would do for realistic effects. You'll see that I've a couple of concepts already. So so many workflows out there, it can be slightly confusing. You know, when do I start to sculpt things? When do I re-topologize? Do I make a subdivided version when it comes to metal? So all these questions are going to be asked with the workflow that I use inside of the industry. So what we're going to go through is a couple of cool techniques. I do some brush changes, especially when it comes to concepting metal pieces so i've got videos of what these dots do just very particular techniques for helping me when i'm starting to sculpt something so so many workflows out there it can be slightly confusing you know when do i start to sculpt things so the first thing i'd really do is get the move brush and just gauge the silhouette for example how much area is this asset taking up so you can focus on the outside and it's mainly about volume you don't really want to be splitting this up just yet so i'm going to get the body this central middle plate and also the shoulder breast and then compare that to the head and once those scales are done I then go through and basically refine it. So this stage is really about using any kind of brush for example there I'm just using a pinch brush so I can get the corner and I'm vaguely looking at this area and trying to match it and aligning it to key landmarks so for example the nipple and I'll just basically do the same across the entire silhouette. I'm not looking for perfection I'm just looking for very generic shapes. You know in this 2D concept I can see quite a major primary edge that goes along here so I can insert that with something like a damn standard um, hold alt just to define that split and that'll be useful when I come to actually make this with the main torso part. Hi guys it's Vertis here so if you're enjoying the video so far make sure you watch to the end because there's loads of useful information if you want to see every single last second of this including all the brush strokes and commentary then I've added it to the members list so if you're interested in joining as a member click join below and you can find all the details of how you can access that including things like live stream and feedback and so apart from that enjoy the rest of the video so really think about speed and efficiency for this one some people might like to mask this body and then extract another piece and dynamesh it and take it apart um, to be honest what I prefer to do is just append a sphere very quickly and shape it to the generic size that I want and it's not like we're creating a t-shirt that needs to conform to this person's muscles or pecs or anything we're just making this very generic breastplate shape okay so when I am working I basically try and get things in quick as possible so there's this mid piece in between the breastplate and the shoulder for that again I just use the IMM primitives and we've got a nice uh, cylinder extended that's a very handy tool the reason I use this instead of appending is that I can draw it physically on top of another mesh almost like a guide surface I don't have to mess around too much with the gizmo uh, if you imagine I append this shape it'd be very hard to basically like position it okay so now we've got that shape it's attached to the sub tool but because it comes already masks I'm going to use a split feature and split by mask points so that's going to be in your sub tools under split I just have it saved in a pop-up menu so if you want to see how I made the pop-up menus uh, there's a video for that going through all the hotkeys and I also release it on the website as I said there's already a video for how I set up these kind of references really good approach so now that it's split I can actually dynamesh this under geometry dynamesh get some good resolution so it can at least work with it to be honest there's so many different ways to make this shape very quickly I'm really proficient with the move brush uh, maybe if I wanted to be a bit more particular on the edge here I could use something like a, a knife curve so control and shift if you press that gives you or control and shift options and then under knife you can come to knife curve then from a certain angle we can just hold control and shift draw this line and then let go and what it's going to do is going to insert a slash there so because we already moved this clay out quite extended and then came back in and did a slash we've now got this uh, nice geometry to work with and you can see it's getting a little bit closer to the original that we had and when I come to moving things I want to move um, landmarks so create the landmark uh, position it and just keep on rotating that kind of workflow so this is obviously bent we can very easily put a bend with a very large move brush and again similar sort of feature I use the same size I don't even switch it that much and then just go back and forth and then that's going to create our curvature and the same with down here obviously with 2ds there's a couple of liberty they're given so sometimes the 3d does 3d doesn't make too much sense so it's your job as a 3d character to basically work that out and try and interpret it in 3d so everyone will come out with different aspects so once we've got the main shape and the landmarks we can now start to move those and I can just come in here and try and match, um, match the silhouette so obviously when you're working by yourself you have a lot of time to do this it's a little bit more difficult doing talking teaching and also trying to represent a 2d mesh so I'll probably spend a little bit more time not talking to shape this just to make sure it's a little bit more accurate so the problem there is that basically on the inside I'd get a very big trim brush and just flatten that down entirely uh, to cut it out because it is interfering a little bit with the silhouette so very harsh press with the trim dynamic and that's gonna form it back a little bit and now I've got some space in between the assets uh, that I can work with and just measure measure pieces up so this 
this front plate's probably a little bit more forwards in terms of 2D concept, probably at the apex of the necks or on the side there. If anything looks a bit too soft or wobbly, I'm not fussed about sharpening this edge so it matches perfectly. I'm mainly looking at forms and volumes. So say for example, I wanna make this. So as you see, I just put a little bit of detail here. It's a key detail for the pectoral and that's just so I can position things and align them. So as you see, basically that this shoulder blade actually goes further down than the breastplate. So all these little increments are gonna be important down the line. So I'm actually gonna change some brush settings to the more indicative of like hard surface. And it's a really cool technique because um, it makes life easier when it comes to hard surface. But before that, I'm gonna show you what to do with this little concept that I've made down here in Photoshop and how it can help you when it comes to forming silhouettes basically. So this is attached via a Z app link and it's brought into this spotlight. So when I press Z, I can basically reposition this. And when I press Z again, it brings me back to my 3D concepts. So I go down in this very deeply in another video um, so you can check that out. So usually what I do is I make this somewhat of a small thumbnail so that when I look at it, I can see everything all at once in my main gaze. So it might be different depending on how big your screen is, for example. But if we're working with a big asset like that, it can sometimes be hard to get the overall silhouette. So I make it actually quite small on the screen. So this doesn't have to be crazy accurate you just have to match it vaguely because again the 2d concept is taking some perspective but in z app link properties under documents uh, we can actually save a camera to always refer back to so we're going to almost use this like our our master shot so just make sure that things are vaguely in the right direction and the right scale that's going to be good enough then under z app link properties i can actually save a camera so under custom one as soon as i click that it saved the camera and if you see if i move around and then click back on the highlighted asset down here it brings me back to my original camera so that can be really cool in a workflow if we hold Control and alt and click custom once and what that's going to do is we can reassign a hotkey to that very button so Control alt click once i let go of everything just to make sure i'm not accidentally hitting keys and then for me i'm going to put it on four and that's just an open key that i have that's always used for a camera shot basically so it might be like a thumbnail that you're doing on art station or your primary form so now that we've got that uh, we can come and just adjust, adjust the silhouette just to make sure we've got the right proportions if you see the big red dots are kind of like my major landmarks and the smaller red dots are more incremental with this asset here just pulling all the corner pieces so the red dots actually help me in finding parts of the concept so if you see the concept is very dark and it's hard to see things so I just pinpoint it with a landmark and then I can drag that landmark on my 3d sculpt and then pull it towards my concept so if this gets annoying what you can do is hold shift Z and that's going to hide and show your reference so you can flip between those two just to see how you're getting on now that we've changed the proportions of this we just need to adjust the breastplate so the characters slightly stylized proportions in terms of the torso and the head in fact what i might do is actually remove the bottom of his body so control and then i can select a mask lasso select all of this come into geometry and also uh, or sub tools and then split so guys i had a bit of a thing there where i had to shut zbrush but it's a good opportunity to show you uh, what you can do to get all these things back so when you've put the references in if you come up to file you can actually save this layout with save spotlight so that saves a file and then when you come to reload your files you can load that spotlight um, and then the same is true with the camera that we saved so in documents if you go to z app link properties you can also save and load your views here so thankfully i actually saved one of those files you'll see that it's now highlighted and then i can click that and because i saved my hotkeys anyway it's always going to snap back to so i actually dock that to the side because I'm always using it. So if ever something isn't drawing and I've got my references up, I can basically come to Spotlight and turn that off. Ready to add some more details to this. If you see the wireframe shift F, and um, there's not much geometry there to work on. So I'm gonna come to geometry and then Dynameship and Dynameship with a slightly bit more resolution, but not too much as to fall into detailing too many things. So you see, I can start to draw out some shapes with the basic brushes. Um, when I'm doing hard surface, what I like to do is come into things like the trim dynamic. I just like to put a square alpha on that and it gives me some nice edges and cornering for sharp sharpness when it comes to hard surface. I'll do the same with the damn standard brush. So I usually turn this into something that's a little bit more sharp um, so I can get some more cornering details. So for example, if I need to enhance a corner, I can go over it quite nicely. And then with the trim dynamic, it gives me a very nice hardened edge. Um, same with something called the H polish. So H polish starts to polish the edges, sorry, polish the faces and it stops on the edge. So after you've put an edge in, you can really refine certain. So now that's done, I'm going to add the spike. So with this, again, I like to do it very quickly. I could 
mask a square shape inside of here and then holding alt I will basically refine this to bring some corners out and that's going to give me the square foundation that I can see on the reference you know if it's too small I'm not going to adjust the mask I'll adjust the clay after so control click that's going to invert it and then for this I'm going to come to the move tool and then I can alt click with this gizmo and then hold the blue arrow and then that's going to pull out some geometry with the yellow box in the center I can reduce that down to make a bit of a, a spike shape so now I can move this around to vaguely match the shape that I want there okay once that's done obviously that's some dodgy topology so as we're in Dynamesh just hold control that's going to reform the structure the underlying structure so if you see the geometry is now changed and it's going to be easier to sculpt on so from this I can basically make the shelf that we see here uh, with the dam standard that we edited I'll hold alt and basically create a new line like a new segment I'll go all the way around the mesh like this to create a division and then on top of that I can reinforce it with something like a clay brush or a clay build up and then that's going to give us some mats and I'll keep on moving in and out and then just comparing that to the concept maybe getting a pinch and then sharpening that top section. Now I'm just gonna go through and start in certain key areas. So for example, this top trim, where I could do all the trim across the entire mesh. So that probably what I would do is just mask. I also like to change the mask into a square. So everything goes into a square, I'm doing hard surface. So with that pen, it's gonna give me a nice edge instead of like this um, soft edge that the rounded brush gives. Again, the brush isn't, the mask isn't gonna be too accurate because we're working with such low divisions. But I just want at least something that I can paint along um, that's not gonna affect too much of the other area. So with clay tubes, I can come through. So this is attached via a Z app link and it's brought into this spotlight. So when I press Z, I can basically reposition this. Then when I press Z again, it brings me back to my 3D concepts. So I go down in this very deeply in another video um, so you can check that out. So usually what I do is I make this somewhat of a small thumbnail so that when I look at it, I can see everything all at once in my main gaze. So it might be different depending on how big your screen is, for example. But if we're working with a big asset like that, it can sometimes be hard to get the overall silhouette. So I make it actually quite small on the screen. And also while you're here, uh, check out the website there's loads of free stuff so free brushes things on retopology just loads of good content that i'm going to continuously release um, to you guys via email so make sure you're on that list it's obviously completely free if you're interested in the full process of this i'll probably be releasing it to people who are supporting the channel via the memberships so you can see every little intricacy that happens uh, and all my commentation on that in, in terms of creating this and so if you like the video um Press the like so you can find it back in your history and obviously subscribe because there's going to be loads of uh, new videos coming out in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.